Hi, welcome back to As It Should Be. Paul Bertolino here in the world famous As It Should Be studios. And, um, well, this is a special, this is going to be like a special little As It Should Be short. It's going to be a short video, hopefully, if I don't babble too too long. But what it is, is uh, I'm sitting down here because it's, uh, I got some mail. I got some mail. As you can see, I have a box here. And uh, this is a box that I received from my best friend. My, my lifelong best friend, Brent Ratkovich. Shout out to Brent Ratkovich. I know he watches these videos sometimes. Um, probably usually, I don't know. But um, yeah, he sent me a package. I know, it, I know it's in here. I know it's inside. But, and I thought, you know, this is worthy of a little little video. So this is going to be... So I'm, gonna, I'm going to actually cut open this box here on camera. If it gets to be too tedious, then I'll do an edit. But uh, yeah. And it's a little, it's, as you might expect, as you might suspect, considering that I'm having it on the channel here, it is records, but these are, are significant. These are significant records. Okay. And very well packed, I might add. Very well packed. I, I, I have it on a very, very, very reliable, uh, uh, from a very, very reliable source. There's actually records somewhere deep in here. Find out. This may be an edit. Okay, I got through the first eight layers. Now I think I'm on the last one here. Uh, the uh, Brent told me that the UPS woman who who helped him collects vinyl, and so she packed it for him. Boy, she really, really packed it nice and safely. I mean, you could probably throw this box off of a cliff, some tall cliff somewhere, and these records would be just fine. I thought I was about there, but I have more layers to get through. Okay, so what we have here are three records from my past. That hopefully I'll finally get out of the... Woo! Boy! This is absolutely insane how well packed... Well... Okay. I've actually made it down to the actual records. Now. Okay. All of this, what's what's all the hubbub, bub? Well, okay, well, what I have here is uh, three records from my friend Brent that are, yeah, again, they're from my past. They're from our past. And, uh, well, this here is the Australian import, the Australian version of Dirty Deeds, okay? Now, what's the significance about this record? Well, this, this very copy of this record is how I learned that this record existed. I probably talked about this on my ACDC albums ranking video. When I I first met Brent, he moved into town and came and started uh, in the same school, same junior high as as I was in in '83, right? And when we were in the eighth grade, and I met him on the first day of school, and. With, we became very fast friends, and we were really into all the same kind of music. I mean, this was when I first started going, getting into my... I was still really very much into my 60s stuff, my, you know, the Beatles, the Who, the Kinks, and everything. But I was really starting to get interested in the harder rock and the metal stuff that my friends were listening to, like ACDC. I was really starting to get, a, get interested in ACDC. Well, Brent said, well, I have this really weird version of Dirty Deeds. And he was telling us all about this exotic Dirty Deeds that he had that was from Australia, that had different songs and different versions and mixes and everything. You gotta see it. So we're like, bring it to school. So he brought this Dirty Deeds to school. I, I probably barely knew Brent for a month. I've now known him for, you know, 40 years or something. I've now known him for 40 years. I had barely known him a month and he brought this to school and he stuffed it in his, in his locker. I swear to you, it was in his locker. I, I can picture it in my head right now, him pulling it out of his locker. I don't know how he fit it in there, but he did. And this, and he showed us this record, and we all just went, ooh, ah, we'd never seen this before. We'd never seen anything like it. We were just staring at the cover, and 
this is how we learned that that these Australian imports existed. And it was kind of the beginning of more of a, of a deeper dive into ACDC uh, beyond just the, the standard U.S. editions of the albums that we all knew. And I, you know, I, I went on, of course, to get my own copies of these records. A little bit later into the 80s, maybe within a year or two, I started buying my own copies of these. And then down the road, as I kind of got out of my hard rock and metal period and went into other phases, I went through periods where I would get rid of records and I would sell them. And I and I and I know that I used to have, uh, uh, yeah, I knew that I had had earlier copies from that I'd bought in the '80s of these Australian a- ACDC records that I figured I just sold, right? Um, you know, because I had TNT and I had the first high voltage and Let It Be Rock and all that kind of stuff. And I thought, I've long since sold those. And I used to take uh, stacks of records to the used uh, record store in order to sell. Stuff that I wasn't into anymore or think I didn't think I needed. And you'd get like a buck or two in trade or whatever. And so I thought I'd long since these records were gone. Well, turns out two of my Australian imports records that I actually owned in the 80s that I thought I'd sold and that were gone forever, I guess I gave them to Brent. One of which is my TNT. This is my TNT that I had in high school. And I am seeing it for the first time now since in decades. This is, oh, here you go. Yeah, I went through a period where I used to write my name on my records. Bad idea. What kind of condition is this in after, after me having it? in high school and Brent having it. Although Brent probably played it like once in all the time he's had it, he's probably just like kept it. It's probably just been in safekeeping the entire time he's had it. Wow. Yeah, so this is, of course, this is the, the original Dark label, Albert label. Now, the other one is the first high voltage. The original Australian high voltage. This is the copy that I bought. I bought this new in the 80s and this was yep yep here it is this was what the current issue of it was at the time when it had the orange albert's label yeah of course the original one would have had the dark label like that tnt but this was the mid 80s albert's label i bought again i bought this as a brand new record at the time not a used one and uh wow and this is the first copy of this album I ever had or saw and I yeah I can't believe I can't believe I have this again like this is this is a weird time travel thing like a records that I'd long since thought you know somebody in Saskatchewan somewhere had now and bought somewhere to use record store and it made through the yeah maybe somebody has them up on Discog somewhere like I'll never see them again nope here they are my, my TNT and my high voltage and Brent's copy of Dirty Deeds that started off the whole craze of, of, of our being obsessed with these Australian imports. Wow. Yeah. Well, thank you, Brent. Thank you so much for sending me these and obviously keeping them. Like, the records are in pretty good condition. Thank you for keeping them nice. Um, you probably did a lot better job of, of taking care of them than I did when I had them. I mean, I was a teenager when I bought them. Um, yeah. Anyway, so there you go. There's my hopefully short little video and uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed uh, you know and like and all that kind of stuff but more importantly come back on Thursday because Crystal Durant and Tommy Von Voigt are going to be here and we are going to be counting down our, down our favorite singles of 1993 and yeah I think I actually have some favorites from that year we'll see we'll see all right all right we'll see you guys soon <laughs>